It's been a long time coming, horror fans, but we're finally doing it, and I, for one, am incredibly happy. We're covering the king of horror himself, Stephen King, the most prolific writer of the 20th and 21st century, and an awe-inspiring colossus of literature. The man has been pumping out some of the greatest works in horror fiction since he penned his first novel, Carrie, way back when in 1974. Since then, we've had the likes of Salem's Lot, The Shining, The Dark Tower, The Stand, Cujo, Christine, Pet Cemetery, The Green Mile, the list goes goes on and on, because if you can't tell, Stephen King churns out novels like a 16th century yeoman churned out butter. Hello horror fans and welcome back to the scary channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as we happily dive into the terrifying fictional world of the King of Horror and curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Stephen King Characters. What do you want? The master wants you. Throw away your cross, face the master, your faith against his faith. Could you do that? Now, I know that I'm not going to please everyone with this list purely for the simple fact that King's body of work spans across so many terrifyingly twisted characters and horrifying monsters that it's pretty impossible to condense them into a five point list. But who knows, maybe we'll be doing a part two and we'll all be happy. Kicking off at number five, Mrs. Carmody, The Mist. Who falls within the realm of some of King's most terrifying non supernatural characters? Although she didn't quite nip the top spot in that one. They, people who refuse to bend to the will of God and claim it privilege, sinners in pride. Although you could argue that Mrs. Carmody has a slight supernatural slant to her. In the novella, she is alluded to be practicing witchcraft and thus having enacted a pact with the big bad baddie himself, Randall Flagg, he who walks behind the roads, whatever you want to call him. Nevertheless, though, the thing that makes Mrs. Carmody so damn terrifying is her religious fanaticism, which is squashed down, condensed, and trapped inside a pressure boiler throughout the plot of the mist. She is terrifying simply because of what she represents and the lengths that she's willing to go to brainwash people into thinking that she's a prophet of God. All while there's a terrifying tentacle mist threatening the lives of the poor people of Bridgeton, Maine. Yeah, talk about opportunity knocks, right? Much like Margaret White, the mother of Carrie, Mrs. Carmody embodies the zealotry that King is so critical of throughout his work, and the result is one of the most terrifying human characters in his fiction. You know why? Because you just can't reason with her. Coming in next at number four, Blaine the Mono, The Dark Tower, the Wastelands, who really, when you look at it, is perhaps one of the most unique monsters in the whole of horror fiction, a train. And how did King manage to make a train scary? He decided to give it an intelligent artificial mind that was on the constant brink of a mental breakdown. For those of you that haven't read Stephen King's The Dark Tower series, you really, really should because it's exactly the stuff like this that makes it one of the most unique blends of fantasy and horror that I've ever read, all while being genuinely fear inducing throughout and King's crowning glory in his fiction. Roland Deschain is one of my favorite characters in literature and we're going to talk about him a lot in this list. But first we have to talk about Blaine the Mono a sentient monorail train that went insane. In the Dark Tower for the Cartet, a group of individuals bound together by cosmic destiny, Blaine was the only way for them to get out of the wastelands from Ludd to Topeka, but the insane train was hellbent on wrapping them up in his own personal suicide. The only solution was to humour Blaine in a game of riddles, which makes for some of the most intense, nerve-wracking scenes in horror fiction. Being trapped on a runaway train is scary enough, but when that train is a highly powerful, fragmented, mentally unstable machine child, the stakes are a little bit higher, to say the least. Next up at number three, Annie Wilkes, Misery. There, look there! See what you made me do! Oh, Paul, I'm sorry. Perhaps the most terrifying non-supernatural Stephen King villain going. Actually, scratch that, she definitely is. What makes Annie Wilkes so terrifying is her element of humanity, or the lack of thereof. She's made up of flesh and bones, no magic seal that binds her life force for infinity, yet she's equally as unstoppable and horrifyingly relentless as King's greatest horror villains. As the seminal villain of King's 1987 novel, Misery, she finds herself miraculously caring for her all-time favourite novelist, Paul Sheldon, after he suffers a near-fatal car accident during a snowstorm. Turns out, the kindly nurse is actually a rage-filled, blood-boiling psychopath responsible for the murders of nearly 70 people throughout her life. Also, she's got a pig who she named Misery after her favourite fictional character, Misery Chastain, who Paul plans to kill off in his latest novel. And that makes her really, really, 
really mad. You will know the scene when you see it, but the 1990 version of Misery features one of the most bone crunching, stomach churning scenes in cinematic history, played out by the show stopping Kathy Bates, who manages to perfectly portray the true insanity of King's Annie Wilkes. Swinging in next at number two, Pennywise the Clown. It. We all float down here. Perhaps the reason that when I first accidentally caught a glimpse of the 1990 miniseries when my parents were watching it, that I was terrified to take a shower or stand near a drain for weeks. And the reason why I'm still terrified of clowns, and the reason why reading the novel years later was still a nightmare inducing experience. It is traumatic in the truest sense of the word. Pennywise the Dancing Clown, Robert Gray, the Eater of Worlds, the Deadlights, whatever you want to call it, this creation is undisputedly one of the true nightmares of Stephen King's work. Its sole motivation is to eat and sleep, eat people specifically, and then sleep for 27 to 30 years. But for me, it's in the origin of evil that Pennywise the Clown truly shines. As the novel loosely touches on, as well as the wider King shared universe, it originated in an undiscovered void containing and surrounding our universe, which is often referred to as the Macroverse, a concept related to Todash Darkness, a dimension of nothingness. King takes a concept which is Lovecraftian in its scope and then hurls it down to a human level, makes it slink away into the sewers and take the form of a clown who offers children a red balloon on rainy days in Derry, Maine. And it's terrifying. Truly, truly terrifying. And finally, our number one spot, Randall Flagg, the Dark Tower, the stand. You're the one that called me here. Not by the telephone, but with your every desire to get rid of the brat, all in the hope that mommy there might love you best. And I hate to put a clip of the 2017 release of The Dark Tower because it was such a disappointment that I don't even want to talk about it, but Matthew McConaughey was actually really decent as the man in black, so he stays. King himself claimed that Randall Flagg was the greatest villain that he'd ever penned and serves as the overarching evil in the King mythos, making appearances in a multitude of novels including The Dark Tower, The Stand, Eyes of the Dragon, Heart of Atlantis, Children of the Corn, Gwendy's Button Box, and he has many names. The Man in Black, Walter O'Dim, Old Creeping Judas. He's an immortal sorcerer who has schemed his way across the ages, forcing humanity to enact vile atrocities in his name, all because, essentially, He's bored. But in King's world, there is one man who can stop him. Roland Deschain of Gilead. For me, one of the greatest lines ever penned in literature is the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. Because a villain is nothing without a hero to combat him. Well, there's my list, folks, for the top five scary Stephen King characters. Why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. Before we depart, though, let's read out some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Folly says, what's the name of the background track? It's so relaxing and sounds really familiar. While well, Folly, in that particular video that you're referring to, the audio is pulled from The Day of Night, which is part of the Silent Hill 2 video game soundtrack. Myself and my editor Ryan are huge fans, so yeah. Glad you enjoyed it. Carlos Cavelio says, Love this channel. Can't express how much I've learned about so many different topics regarding horror and creepy pastas. Could you do a video about Juon or the original ring? By far, Juon was the scariest movie I ever saw. Cheers from Montreal, guys. Well, hey Montreal, I love to visit that wonderful place sometime. Hey, it means a lot that you're learning from us and we're glad to be of service, Carlos. I'll see what I can do. We'll maybe even do an entire J horror video. Cheers, buddy. You stay spooky. Well, unfortunately, folks, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video, be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.